Uh, in the previous lecture, we had started looking at the notion of partial derivatives uh, and how do you compute partial derivatives uh, using uh, chain rule for composite functions. So, let us look at some examples of computing partial derivatives uh, using chain rule. So, uh, the first example we look at is the example uh, f x y which is given by x square plus y square for x and y belonging to R 2. So, uh, let us find out uh, why it is uh, where this is a function of two variables and let us assume x itself is a function of a variable t given by x t is equal to e raised to the power t. So, keep in mind it is the exponential function e raised to the power t where e is a number. Okay. Uh, we had looked at this function in the first lecture or second lecture and y of t is equal to t for t belonging to r. So, uh, x is a function of t and f is a function of x and y, y is also a function of t. So, what will be f as a function of t? We can actually put the values of uh, f uh, uh, values of x in uh, this formula. So, that will give you x square that is e to the power 2 plus t square. So, f actually becomes a function of one variable and we can compute the derivative as if it is a function of one variable. But we want to illustrate this as a uh, uh, example of chain rule. So, let us look at w t as a function f of x t comma y t. So, uh, this gives us uh, the value uh, f is a function of x and y and x is a function of t and y is a function of t. So, by chain rule what will be the derivative of w with respect to t? It is a partial derivative of f with respect to x into derivative of x that is dx by dt plus derivative of y, uh, f with respect to the variable y into dy by dt. So, partial derivative of f with respect to x that we get from this equation. So, that is 2 x y is kept constant. So, that is 2 x. So, and 2 x x is equal to e raised power t. So, you get the first term as 2 x 2 into e raised to power t into uh, d x by d t, but x t is equal to e raised power t. So, its derivative is d x by d t that is e raised to power t itself. Uh, if you recall, we had mentioned that for the exponential function derivative is itself plus the contribution with respect to the second variable now. So, that will be partial derivative of f with respect to y into d y by d t. So, partial derivative of y with respect uh, of f with respect to y is 2 y and y is equal to t. So, that is 2 t into d y by d t. So, d y by d t is equal to 1. So, that is only 2 t. So, using chain rule the derivative of uh, w with respect to t is this expression which you can simplify into 2 into 2 e raise power t plus t. So, that is okay. Let us look at the function uh, same function f x y is equal to x square plus y square, but here x now is a function of two variables s and t x of s t is equal to s square minus t square and y of s t is 2 times s t. So, uh, it is the same function of two variables is same as before x square plus y square, but now x is a function of two variables t and s. So, s square minus t square and y also is a function of two variables uh, s and t. So, if you like you can put these values uh, in x square plus y square and you will get f as a function as a function uh, composite function as a function of two variables, but the formula will look quite complicated. So, let us try to use uh, chain rule to find the partial derivative of this. So, f is a function of two variables x and y, x itself is a function of two variables s and t and y also is a function of two variables s and t. So, partial derivative of the composite function. So, what will be the composite function f of x s t comma y s t. So, we can compute the partial derivative of uh, that function. So, the function is g s t which is f of x t x s t comma y s t s of t belonging to r. So, g is a function of two variables and s right g is a function of two variables s and t. However, this comes as a composite function f of x s t comma y s t. So, g as a function of two variables uh, will have partial derivative with respect to s 
and with respect to t. So, how do you find that? So, partial derivative of g with respect to s to compute that we will look at. So, it will be two terms coming partial derivative of f with respect to x and if you are differentiating with respect to s then the partial derivative of x with respect to s. So, that will be the first term plus partial derivative of f with respect to y multiplied by partial derivative of y with respect to s. So, that will be the uh, um, partial derivative of g with respect to s. So, let us compute that. So, partial derivative of g with respect to s will be partial derivative of f with respect to partial derivative of uh, f with respect to um, x into the derivative of uh, partial derivative of x with respect to s. So, that gives you this term plus the second derivative second term that is the partial derivative of f with respect to y into the partial derivative of y with respect to s. So, that is the second term. So, similarly we can find the partial derivative of g with respect to t being first look at partial derivative of f with respect to t into the partial derivative of y with respect to t plus partial derivative of uh, f with respect to y in terms of partial derivative of y with respect to t and all are put in terms of s and t. So, that your answer eventually is in terms of s and t. So, this is how you apply chain rule and compute the partial derivative of uh, uh, composite functions using what are called chain rules. Uh, let us uh, go to uh, slightly uh, next concept. See in functions of one variable, uh, we said that if uh, the first derivative, the derivative of a function exists at every point uh, in the domain, then we can ask whether the function is differentiable again and if it is so, we can, will get the what is called the second derivative and similarly the third order derivative and so on. Similarly, partial derivatives are functions of one variable only. So, if the partial derivative of a function of two variables say f x y, if the partial derivative of f with respect to x exists at all points, then it is a function of two variables again and one can ask what are its partial derivatives. So, partial derivative f of x will have two partial derivatives again differentiating f of x with respect to x and then differentiating this with respect to y um, or differentiating it with respect to x again itself. So, uh, each partial derivative will give you two more partial derivatives of higher order uh, depending on the function. So, let us write this so that we are able to use them. So, the first one is f x x which is also written as partial derivative with a power 2 here. So, del square f divided by del x square. So, this is how you read this. So, it is del square f uh, del x square or it is a second order partial derivative of f with respect to x and x. So, what is this? You take the function find its partial derivative with respect to x and then again find its partial derivative with respect to x. So, this is partial derivative of x twice you can call it. So, partial derivative of f with respect to x that gives you a function find its partial derivative with respect to x. The other possibility is you look at similarly with respect to y. So, look at the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So, that gives you one partial derivative function right. This is the partial derivative of f with respect to y and that may be differentiable with respect to y again. So, we can find the partial derivative of this function. This is a function of two variables keep in mind. Uh, partial derivative of f with respect to x is a function of two variables as well as the partial derivative of y f with respect to y is again a function of two variables if we assume it to be differentiable everywhere with respect to the variable. So, then if the partial derivative of this function which is a function of two variables with respect to y exists then this is called the second order partial derivative of f with respect to y or read as del square f by del y square or f y y or simply saying it is the second order partial derivative of f with respect to y. Other possibilities are this function exists for example, partial derivative of f with respect to x exists, but we instead of asking partial derivative of that with respect to x again we can ask what is the partial derivative of this with respect to y. 
that may exist. So, that gives you another possibility that the partial derivative of f with respect to x, its partial derivative with respect to the variable y. So, that is written as del square f del y del x. So, uh, note that here x is, so the, as if the bracket is removed and this del is multiplied and called del square and del y del x, right. So, this is only shortened notation. So, you should read it as it is a second order, 2 indicates the order f of the function f, so partial derivative, second order partial derivative of f, what is the second, 2 orders, first with respect to x and then with respect to y. So, you are going to read from right to left. While as in the, if you can also write it as f of x y, there you will read it as from left to right. So, you will be reading as x first and then with respect to y. So, keep in mind whether if this notation is used, this is first find the partial derivative of f with respect to x and then with respect to y, right. So, that is going, this, so this uh, lower suffix is going from left to right. Whereas, here in the denominator, if you think it is a denominator, it is going from right to left. So, this is a second order partial derivative of the function f, where the first you differentiate with respect to x and then differentiate with respect to the variable y. Similarly, there will be a partial derivative what is denoted by y x, that means you first differentiate with respect to y and then with respect to x, also called partial second order partial second order partial of f by uh, del square f divided by del x del y or second order partial derivative of f with respect to y and then with respect to x. So, that is the order here that is left to right and it is right to left. You take the function partial derivative of f with respect to y first and then you take its partial derivative with respect to x. So, there are four partial derivatives available second order partial derivatives for a function of two variables. Uh, all of them may not exist, some of them may exist, but these are the possibilities of. So, these are called four second order partial derivatives of a function of two variable. Uh, these f x y and f y x, they are called the mixed second order partial derivatives because the variables x and y are mixed here. So, this is called f x x, f y y. This is the they are pure second order uh, derivatives and these are called the mixed second order partial derivatives. In general, f x y is not equal to f y x. So, caution should be taken that in general for a function of two variables, the two mixed second order partial derivatives are not equal. So, there are uh, sufficient conditions which ensure that when they will be equal. We will not go into those conditions. However, we will assume that uh, for our purpose they are uh, equal. So, those conditions are satisfied. So, these are called the higher order partial derivatives. Uh, so, they uh, correspond to something like second order derivatives of a function of one variable. Uh, we are defining them because they find uh, applications in uh, economics, commerce and management. So, let us look at one example. Uh, let us recall the Cobb Douglas function. Uh, which was defined as q is equal to q k l a into l raised to power alpha. Once again, this is l is a typo, it should be k raised to power beta, where a alpha and beta are positive constants. k is the capital and l is the labor input. For this uh, function, just now uh, we saw today that the uh, uh, marginal uh, of the product of labor q uh, l is a partial derivative of uh, q with respect to l was obtained as this and uh, the partial uh, marginal of q with respect to k was uh, today uh, uh, we got as beta q by k in, uh, in the previous lecture. So, these are the uh, marginals of uh, the Cobb Douglas function which we obtained. So, let us look at uh, the second order, uh, 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 both the marginals are positive that we know. So, let us look at the second order uh, for this. So, q l l will be the second order partial derivative of q with respect to l. So, that we can differentiate uh, by looking at this one alpha q by l. So, it will be l square. So, the, by the quotient rule. 
So, this will be L square, this will go up. So, alpha times L into derivative of uh, Q with respect to L minus uh, the Q time alpha Q into derivative of L that is 1. So, let us put these values. So, that is equal to so L into derivative of Q with respect to L minus Q into derivative of L that is Q. So, if you simplify that is alpha into alpha minus 1 into Q divided by L square. So, that is a simple equation we get. Similarly, uh, Q Q uh, the second order partial derivative of Q with respect to K uh, is partial derivative of. So, take the first order partial derivative that is we obtained in the previous. Uh, so, that is the partial derivative. Mm. So, this function this is the first order partial derivative, second order partial derivative using the quotient rule. So, K square in the denominator numerator will be beta times k into derivative of q with respect to k minus q times derivative of k that is equal to 1. So, that gives us uh, the second uh, expression namely the second order partial derivative of q with respect to k is beta into beta minus 1 divided by k square into q. So, these two expressions are the marginals, uh, they are the derivatives of marginals. So, these will tell us how does the marginals change, right? what kind of a functions the marginals are there. So, keep in mind that uh, alpha and uh, beta are positive and q and l are positive. So, if alpha is between 0 and 1 and beta also is between 0 and 1, so that will give us 1. So, in normally uh, in uh, production uh, in a production function, we require that the values of inputs increase, the marginal should decline. If there is an increase in the values of the product function, right, then the, that means if the inputs increase, marginal should decline. So, that is a normal uh, principle, guiding principle for economic models. That means we want uh, QLL and QKK to be uh, decreasing functions. For them to be decreasing functions, uh, we should have uh, alpha to be less than 1 and beta should be uh, less than 1. So, that is the reason one normally uh, if you want this property to be true that the functions their derivatives are derivative of the marginals these are the second order partial derivatives if they are negative then that condition will be true when alpha and beta both are less than 1 they are non negative quantities. So, they should be between alpha between 0 and 1. So, in Cobb Legless model normally one says alpha and beta are positive constants and uh, they are between 0 and 1. So, that is the basic assumption taken in Cobb Douglas model and the reason is as indicated here this basic principle of uh, economics. So, uh, now uh, what we will be doing we will be uh, we will start looking at the notion of local maxima and local minima for functions of two variables. Uh, if you recall for functions of one variable uh, how we looked at the notion of local maxima and minima. We first obtained a necessary condition namely that if at a point a function has local maxima or a local minima then the derivative and, and the derivative at that point exists then the derivative should be equal to 0. So, that gave us uh, uh, ne that necessary condition gave us the possible points where the local maxima or minima can occur. And then we had the various tests, the continuity tests, the first derivative test and the second derivative test to analyze whether those possible candidates for uh, local maxima or minima are actually local maxima or minima for the function or not. So, they were the sufficient conditions. So, we had necessary conditions for local maxima minima and uh, sufficient conditions for local maxima minima. The same process we are going to follow for functions of two variables. So, first we will define what is called uh, the local maxima and local minima for a function of two variables and then uh, give necessary conditions for uh, a function of two variables. If it has a local maxima and or a local minima at a point then what are the conditions and then we will look at the sufficient conditions to analyze those possible candidates where the function can have local maxima or local minima. So, let us look at uh, in the definitions. So, the first definition says for a function of uh, two variables with a domain d, d is a subset of R2, a point x0, y0 is called a point of local maximum 
So, if uh, if there is a uh, ball this B delta x 0 y 0 is nothing but a ball centered at uh, x 0 y 0 of radius delta. That means, this, this is a set of all points uh, at a distance maximum of uh, delta. So, let me just explain uh, because we have not really explained this very well in the beginning. So, for a, uh, for the in the plane, so if I take a point x 0 y 0, then what is ball centered at x 0 y 0 of radius delta. So, this is nothing but this is a set of all points x and y belonging to R 2 such that the distance between x 0 y 0 and x y is less than delta. So, what is the distance? So, the distance is x minus x 0 square plus y minus y 0 square this is less than delta. So, this is a set of all points and in the picture. So, if this is the point x 0 y 0 then these points are nothing but the points which are at a distance of delta. So, that means at a distance of delta you are looking at but strictly less than delta. So, you will be looking at all points in the disk but minus the boundary, the boundary is not going to be included. So, all points inside that is the ball, um, um, that is a ball. So, we say it is a ball radius, ball of radius delta at, so uh, at the point x 0 y 0. Because we are not including the boundary, one normally actually qualifies open ball of radius delta. Uh, this is also sometimes called the delta neighborhood B neighborhood of the point x 0 y 0. So, uh, you recall in a function of one variable, we defined the neighborhoods by the open intervals centered at that point. Here uh, B of x 0 y 0 is an open ball uh, in the plane centered at x 0 y 0. So, what we are saying is uh, a point of local maxima at the point x 0 y 0, if there is a neighborhood of that point in the domain of course, such that at all these points x y the value of the function is the largest. So, f of x 0 y 0 is bigger than f of x y for all points in the delta neighborhood of the point x 0 y 0. So, in this case we say is the point of local maximum. So, locally, so what does locally mean? So, in an open neighborhood of that point uh, x 0 y 0 in the domain the value is the largest. So, locally the value is the largest and similarly we say it is a point of local uh, uh, in this case we say that this value of the function, uh, the point is called the point of local maximum and the value of the function at that point is called the local maximum of the function. One can define similarly the point of local minimum at x 0 y 0 uh, to be that point such that there is a neighborhood delta bigger than 0 with the property that the value at the point x 0 y 0 is smallest for all points in that neighborhood, open neighborhood, uh, open ball around the point x 0 y 0, then you say it is a local minimum. And the value of the function at that point uh, is called the local minimum, that point is called the point of local uh, minimum. So, uh, we can have a look at some examples, if I look at the function f x y is equal to minus of x square y square, then uh, uh, we had tried to visualize the graphs of this functions, they are surfaces, this will look like a inverted cup and the negative that means the surface is going to lie below the x y plane. So, the point x 0 y 0, um, the point 0 0 is going to be a point of local maximum, uh, the value will be 0 0. So, the point 0 0 is going to be a point of local minimum maximum and the value 0 is the local maximum for such a function. If I just invert it, so the function becomes f x y is equal to x square plus y square for x y belonging to this, then uh, we get that the point 0 0 is a point of local minimum and the value at 0 0 is a local minimum for the function. So, this is simple examples of local maximum and local minimum for the functions. 
like functions of one variable, we have the following necessary condition for local maximum and local minimum. So, let us write this as a theorem that if f is a function uh, which is defined in some uh, open domain uh, in R 2, a function of two variables, if both the partial derivatives exist and f has a local maximum or a local minimum at the point x 0, y 0, either of it, then the partial derivatives of f with respect to x and partial derivative of y with respect to f with respect to y at that point must be 0. So, um, what we are saying is if a point x 0, y 0 is a point of local maximum or a local minimum for the function and the partial derivative is exists at that point, then they must be equal to 0, which is perfectly similar to the function of one variable. If local maximum or a local minimum for a function of one variable exists and if the function is differentiable, then the derivative must be equal to 0. So, that is the necessary condition that uh, we get for a function of two variables um, to be point of local maximum or local minimum. But keep in mind that if we look at the for example, the function square root of x square plus uh, y square, this function does not have local maximum, uh, does not have partial derivatives at the point 0, 0. That you can easily check because this ratio f of x 0, f of y 0 divided by x will be equal to mod x by x, which is that limit does not exist at the point 0, 0. So, for this function, the partial derivatives do not exist but the function has got a local minimum at the point 0, 0. So, keep in mind the function can have a local maximum or a local minimum without partial existence of partial derivatives. Um, is a point of local minimum without, so thus the condition in the theorem is only a necessary, but not a sufficient condition. So, uh, let us define what is called uh, a critical point. So, like in one variable, an interior point uh, in the domain of the function will be called a critical point if either both f of x and f y exist and are equal to 0 and second possibility is one or both of them do not exist like in one variable derivative may not exist or uh, uh, the points where uh, there could be the boundary points, the third one uh, we are not listed here, we should list that also. So, those also could be the points of so, these are the interior points. So, okay. so, for interior points, there are the only two possibilities partial derivative will exist and are equal to 0 uh, or either or both of the partial derivatives do not exist. So, keep in mind this is for the interior points. Okay. So, as a corollary of this, we will get that a function can have a local maxima minima can occur only at the critical points or possibly at the boundary points of the domain. Like in function of one variable, um, the critical points and the boundary points together give the possible candidates for the function to have a local maxima or minima. So, um, uh, like in one variable, we gave sufficient conditions for the possible points to be local maxima or minima. Same we will do it for functions of two variables in the next lecture. So, we will continue our study of points of local maxima or minima uh, for functions of two variables in the next lecture. Thank you.